Right, you welcome to Excel virtual class and this happens to be our very first lesson for the grade level pedagogy. Grade level pedagogy. Now, in today's class, we shall be focusing on those who are going to teach at the SHS level. So, grade level pedagogy for SHS lesson one, introduction. So, by the end of today's lesson, you would gain an appreciation of the concepts of pedagogy because the subject you're writing about is um, grade level pedagogy and you focus on SHS. So when you say pedagogy, what actually comes to mind? Then we'll try to distinguish between pedagogy and andragogy. Then we'll look at the types of pedagogy and we'll look at the um, pedagogical examples and how they can be applied in a classroom. So let's get started. All right, so pedagogy. What is pedagogy? The way to hear pedagogy what comes to mind. So pedagogy is simply the art and science of teaching young children. So when someone is teaching young children, the art of teaching or the science to which that is taught is called the pedagogy. Pedagogy. Now, when we say pedagogy, it is centered around the teacher being the primary facilitator of knowledge. The teacher is seen as the sole repertoire of knowledge. He holds all the knowledge in the world. And he is the one or the right person to feed the learner with the knowledge he has acquired. And thus, if you are a learner, you now come in only as a recipient. So the teacher is always seen as the giver, 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 giver all the time. Then the student is seen as the recipient of the knowledge. And that is how the lesson is planned. Now, pedagogy equally focus on structured curriculum, sequential learning, and then the teacher is always the one who is leading the instruction. Now, for the teacher to be all to be the one to be the man on the pulpit giving the sermon, giving the I'm saying sermon to use um to represent teaching because when you go to many churches, you realize that when the pastor is preaching. He is the one seen as um, who has heard from God and he's presenting what he has heard from God to the people. In the same way, we talk about pedagogy, we see teaching as so a teaching concept where the teacher is seen as the one who has the knowledge and is pouring out to the people that is pedagogy. So, the teacher may use storytelling, games, some hands on activity with the learners by way of trying to communicate what he intends to deliver or teach the children or the students. So, while the teacher brings knowledge and experience to the classroom, emphasis is not primarily on the learner's experience, but the content being taught. So, there's a clear, um, we need to note this very well. While the teacher brings knowledge and experience to the classroom, because he's seen as the one who has all the knowledge, the emphasis is not primarily on the learner's experiences. So, although learners may have some experiences which may be worthy, emphasis is not on that emphasis is on the content that each is bringing to their class now let's look at andragogy now when we look about andragogy here we are looking at the practice the arts the science of teaching adults so in teaching adult learners the science and the arts that comes to play make up what we call andragogy now it is based on the idea that adults have their unique learning needs and characteristics that are called different approach from learners now already we see learners as people who know virtually nothing and since they know nothing an adult on the other side knows something and therefore if we are to teach adults and then to, have to teach um younger ones children the approach should vary, it should not necessarily be the same. So, in as much as there is an NTC uh, exam we are preparing for, an exam for adults, you shouldn't equally really expect that everything should come from me. It should be a two way affair. So, I in this case I'm will only have to facilitate their learning and you equally co collaborate with me. We work hand in hand, then in the end you're able to see and meet the desired learning objective or the learning outcome that we seek to achieve 
Now, they are more autonomous and prefer to take an active role in their learning. Adults are more autonomous and they want to be involved in the learning. It should not be only one way because they will have experiences that they want to share or contribute. Adults are assumed to be ready and motivated to learn because they have specific learning needs and goals related to their life experiences and responsibilities. Now, Andragogi emphasizes on problem solving, critical thinking, and practical application of knowledge. Since they are adults, we believe they've already acquired some knowledge and they should be allowed to now apply the knowledge that they have gained. So, in as much as we are learning um, grade level pedagogy for SHS, I'm going to deliver the content to you, but you are expected to be able to apply the knowledge you'd gain from this class and be able to fit into the needs of NTC. So adults prefer to learn through discussions, case studies, real life examples, and relate to their personal experiences. Adults are encouraged to share their experiences in the learning environment. Now, having said this, we try to look at the types of pedagogy. In as much as we try to distinguish between pedagogy and andragogy, sometimes or the use of pedagogy has overshadowed all the other types of um, arts of learning. So then you would see pedagogy in most instances. So you read the exam, you realize the subject is titled um, grade level pedagogy, not giving uh, much credence to the andragogy and the other forms of um, the other arts of learning. So we're going to be using the pedagogy almost throughout, but however, we should be able to draw a clear distinction when the moment you mention andragogy, adults comes to mind. Now, the types of pedagogy, the fact that I'm, I'm listing a, few, a number of them does not mean that you're supposed to have all these in the, at the back of your mind. No. What we need to get is an appreciation of what the concept. So the objective said, we need to gain an appreciation of the concept necessarily for you to uh, have everything in mind or off head. So you have the traditional pedagogy, which we have explained in the introduction. We have the inquiry-based pedagogy. We have experiential pedagogy, where you learn through experiences. With the inquiry-based, learners learn actually by asking questions. They learn by asking questions. They're constructivists. So we are seen as the learner is seen more of an architect, trying to bring up, construct the knowledge by him or herself. We have problem-based pedagogy, in this case where real-life problems are presented to the learner or the learners, and the learners now are able to now devise a way of learning around that particular problem. We have the collaborative pedagogy. Now, with collaborative or corporate pedagogy, what comes to or what we try to highlight is that you allow the learners to learn in groups. So, in today's times, in many of the early childhood classes, you realize that the students are grouped. They are grouped around a circular table and then we expect that they learn together. We have the flipped classroom pedagogy. Now, there is a, uh, a complete flip. So, uh, if pedagogy, traditional pedagogy is like this, where teacher gives to the students, when we flip it this way, it means that now learning is not dependent on the teacher. However, the students are now taxed to dig out the information for themselves. So instead of the traditional being like this, it is now flipped. Now the Montessori education, which we know in Ghana, but there are some schools that really apply this very well. We have play-based pedagogy. All the people, learners are playing, they are learning something. We have the Reggio Emilia um, pedagogy, um, which equally, looking at briefly, then differentiated pedagogy, which seeks to address a particular learning style to the needs of the learners. So for traditional pedagogy, we have explained that. Inquiry base, we've got to explain that. So just to um, wrap up or like summarize everything. So the traditional is centered on the teacher as the main head. Inquiry is true questions. Experiential, they learn through experiences, field trips, practicals problem solving here they are tasked to solve real world problems and enhance their skills now with a constructivist here emphasis is based on learners ability to construct the knowledge 
by building upon their existing understanding experiences so i said earlier that they are the architects of for themselves so they craft it they learn based on what they have experienced what they what um and they build up on their understanding and their knowledge collaborative we talk we spoke about this a few minutes ago so here they learn in groups teamwork comes to play so the dynamics that comes along and the teacher will now be one providing a guide to them now to Montessori education or the pedagogy now there's a uh, focuses on promoting a child's natural curiosity and independence so this time around more or less like an inquiry by an advance from the inquiry you are promoting a child's curiosity like you, you stir a child's um, curiousness up so the child now tends to be much more curious and as they tend to be more curious they try to learn and realize many things on their own so it is a more of independent approach at the same time you stir up their cu curiousness their curiosity level and by so doing they discover so the student would now end up discovering the knowledge unlike the constructivists where they manufacture the knowledge here they will now discover the knowledge now we have the play base we explained that earlier as well so emphasize on child learning through playing that enhance their cognitive development so it's equally a good exercise for them in that way now the flip pedagogy we explained that so here learning takes place mm, outside the classroom so be able to do that then Re Re regio emilia's um pedagogy focuses much more on creativity expression and the key thing here is that learning should be based or learning stems from the child's environment so the child's environment shifts their learning and their experiences now we differentiated here it involves tailoring the instruction to meet the individual needs of learners and the individual learning style so here you, you don't apply a one side uh, pedagogy you don't adopt a one approach you need to vary it according to the learner in question and by so doing, we say you've been able to now differentiate or adopt the differentiated pedagogy now how can these examples be applied in a classroom now let's note very well it's essential that we know that the effectiveness of each approach can vary depending on a class depending on the age of the students depending on the learning style the objective of the lesson so many things come to play so you don't just choose a one size fits all and for you to choose a particular style or pedagogy type you must note that something should have pre-informed you and no matter what pre-informs you and you make a choice that choice should be able to meet the overall educational objective so typically if you are going to use a teacher centered approach or the traditional approach then you are seeing it as the thing is more or less unknown to the people and you are now trying to go and you're going to deliver the lesson onto them so teacher has the full knowledge and is going to now transfer to the learners is that it should be that the learners should have little to zero idea about it and then you are going to now inform them now for someone to use experiential learning pedagogy then it means that for the very lesson you're going to deliver onto the people you realize that um, they have uh, a bit of experience or you can try to do some simulation and then you apply that uh, to the lesson and that would help in their learning so and then for you to adopt collaborative or before you choose that then it should come to mind that well this very thing they can work in groups they can work in teams so uh, i remember there's a time when i used to teach in a primary school uh creative arts more especially when they were to do clear work especially i hardly would involve myself in the work they're going to do only thing i do is possibly to tell them we're going to <coughs> craft this or design this they put them in groups and so marvel you by the time they would now present their projects or their artifacts you realize they really have the skill 
they learn together one person would said this let's do it this way and that said this no this will not help and before but they come up with the final product they design you realize knowledge is really at work in them so inquiry based to if it demands you to throw more questions to them or they ask more questions and that will help them to get the new knowledge or the information that is it or if it's going to be uh Montessori based where you stir up their curiosity and then that will cause them to ask more questions and they will realize or discover whether the question will be rhetoric or not here you're stirring up so it will now draw their attention to that now in events where you put a challenge there and they are now to solve then it's likely you need to use the problem based approach so before we wrap up we need to now consider some factors to consider before we select a particular pedagogy before we pick a particular style what are some of the things that we should consider so one the learning objective matters so example the objective says that by the end of the lesson the student should be able to gain an appreciation of the concept of pedagogy now in an objective like this it appears that the learners do not really have an appreciation of pedagogy they don't really know what it is so if something like this produce objective you are likely the tutor to be be more of the giving 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 side or you make them realize that it is something that they know so i cite an, I cite an example say have you ever been to the church and you see you saw the pastor preaching or did you witness the sermon now when we go to the sermon what happened who was the one um speaking in most of the cases then they'll tell you where well, the pastor did all the talking maybe at a few times one person came to read the bible or something then you realize if you draw uh lessons from that the main thing that happens during the sermon is the speaker trying is the one delivering more of the information then you can now build up from that side and present your lesson sometimes too before you can select a particular pedagogy you need to know the characteristics of the students the nature of the students their learning styles their, their learning pace uh, do they know something before their prior knowledge the age matters as well too. so if they are younger ones you know this is how you must go about it if they are adults you must go about it this way the classroom resources so if you are teaching in a modern school they have it equipment they realize your teaching style can actually even vary you can even use the flip uh, pedagogy where they would watch the videos or the less themselves and they would come now and then present what they know so you shift the uh, goal push shift the focus of the lesson time constraint so if you are limited by time and you want to uh, allow the students to collaborate and teach the very course you want to do you realize it will be very difficult because you are limited by time now the teacher's expertise if the teacher is a master of the thing he's teaching it's more likely that he wants to be the one to deliver because he sees himself as the expert in it now student engagement matters student motivation would cause them to try to contribute and will make it a two-way affair the class size is really key so if you are teaching a very large classroom it's hard for you to see you want to allow for everyone to ask questions you want to stay up their uh, questioning abilities and um, you want to want all of them to collaborate you want to have an inclusive learning that will be very difficult because the class size is very large also if the learning the topic is actually a progression from the previous topic which relates very well with it you realize that approach or style you choose would actually also vary also the background of the learners whether their cultural background their linguistic background their socioeconomic background all these can affect the type of pedagogy that you may choose in delivering your lesson also some schools have strict policies in our school if you're a teacher we prefer you teach this way in that case you are bound by the policy or the style adopted by the school to go in accordance to that then the assessment mode so 
if you're going to assess learners on this or on this particular scheme that assessment will now pre-inform you as to how to deliver the lesson so that students will be able to best relate what you want to teach with what is actually um you actually designed so with all the things you have said it is worthy to note that there is no one side fits all pedagogy and the effective teaching style the effective pedagogy to use depends on a number of factors and you are therefore supposed to know the type of content you are to deliver know the learners know their prior experiences their lessons the energy they've gained before your expertise the environment the classroom the school and you now now fashioned you fashioned your instruction to meet the needs of all the learners so that is a basic introduction to today's lesson um, the concept of pedagogy now in today's lesson we looked at what is pedagogy as the art of and science of teaching young children we saw also andragogy which the art and science of teaching adults now we we'll try to look at uh, how how can you best distinguish between pedagogy and andragogy you should be able to do that now uh, what factors do you consider before you select a particular pedagogy so you should be able to call it tell us that now also you, you can you should also at least have a fair idea and be able to state about five um, types of pedagogy I've told you that stating the types you don't need to master them and uh, you need to only gain an appreciation of it because the exam will be scenario based questions so just after this video this class I will send you questions on the topic I've just done so far and I expect that you should be able to now give me very good answers in these areas and I think the pace that uh, you'll be able to now provide would enable me to know how best to um, also call structure the lesson so the assessment i would get the results of the assessment that will now inform me on the pedagogy to use in delivering the lesson as well so thank you very much for joining today's class really appreciate your time and your efforts thank you now if you are watching this on youtube remember to like subscribe to the channel and then um, keep sharing the videos thank you god bless you bye bye see you on the page